My name is Hall T. Martin. I started Angel Investing in the early 2000s as the company I worked at for 24 years went IPO. In my first investment, I lost all my money. As I told other investors what I did, I commented I must have made 25 mistakes on that investment. One of the investors told me, you made 50 mistakes on that deal. It was at that point I learned that investing in startups is harder than it looks. I decided to join an angel network and found a new one starting in my city. As one of the first members, I was automatically invited to join the board as a membership recruiter. It was a great honor, they said. There's no pay, but it was a great honor. I started talking with other potential investors about joining so we could share the deal flow and the due diligence because that was the costly part of startup investing, talking to all the potential deals and investigating the promising ones. After a few months, we lost our director, so I stepped in to lead the group as I had recruited about 50 members. We started running pitch sessions to the members and set up a deal flow process for screening, due diligence, and investing. Over the next two years, we invested about 5 million and 20 deals and had our first exit at a 7x return. This is quite an outlier to have such an early exit and at such a high level. I sat through other angel groups with more experience than mine and heard their historical returns, which ran something like this. We, the XYZ Angels, have been in operation for over 10 years and have invested 175 million in 181 deals over that time. Of those 181 deals, the top deal returned 200x to the investors in the deal. Next one down was 7x, next one down was 5x, next, one, next four were 3x, the next 15 deals were 1.5x, the original investment, and the bottom 159 deals returned less than 1x. This drove home to me the challenge in early stage investing. The top 10% are great returns, the next 15% may return something but not much, and the bottom 75% returns nothing at all. Along the way, I found that the biggest challenge in early stage funding is not avoiding the crash and burns, but rather avoiding the lifestyle businesses looking for a place to happen. By that, I mean the startup that promises it will be a rocket to the moon, so come join the ride. Instead, it goes up a little ways and then plateaus never to grow much again. It turns into a lifestyle business for the founders, but returns nothing, not even a tax write-off to the investor. As I looked at the workings of the Angel Network, what surprised me most was how many entrepreneurs came through to pitch to my room full of investors. 90% would pitch and go away, and we would never hear from them again. About 10% of them would come back and tell us more about the deal, the pro show progress, and give us updates. They were the ones that raised most of the funding. After about the fourth update, that's when the investors made their decision and they would invest or pass. If they invested, they knew why they were investing. If they passed, they knew why as well. The key to raising funding is you have to build a relationship with the investor and demonstrate the growth story. It's not enough just to forecast the growth story, but rather you must show it in action. Investors were primarily looking for numbers that were steadily growing. The entrepreneurs were not very good at keeping investors informed as they were busy building products, closing sales, and keeping their employees happy. Investors tended to fall off their list of keeping up to date. Since the entrepreneurs weren't going to keep the investors informed, I found that as an unmet need. I decided to apply that approach to startups. Instead of investing after the first meeting, I would follow it and see what would happen to it. Since startups are not listed on public exchanges, this is a bit more difficult because I had to follow up with each company to see how they were doing. My father was a buy and hold investor in public stocks. He had watch lists and would monitor stocks for three to six months, noting the sales team and other news about the company. After three months, he would make a decision to buy or not. He was always learning more about the company and was looking for evidence that they were on track to hit their goals. It's hard to tell in a one month snapshot if things are going in the right direction. After starting three angel networks in the 2000s, I decided to start my own company under the name Texas Entrepreneurs Network to help startups raise funding using this approach. For a while, we ran physical funding forums around the state of Texas several times and all the way out to El Paso. It was great to see all those investors and help startups raise funding. There was just one flaw in that model. Texas is a big state and we were driving everywhere. So in 2012, we moved everything online in the form of a funding portal. Crowdfunding was coming into its own at the time and with it brought online technologies, portals, email updates, etc., to the process of fundraising. Previously, everything was offline and most were held in dinner, dinner club settings, which meant the investors and entrepreneurs had to physically meet up. Online tools helped with screening, due diligence, deal monitoring, and more. By 2016, we had built our investor network to over 5,000 accredited investors and were receiving calls from across the country from startups raising funding and wanting to access our investors. So we rebranded to 10 Capital and started showing companies from across the U.S. to our investors. Most of the investors at that point decided they wanted the best deal available, not just the best deal in Texas, so they were receptive to the increased deal flow. 
In starting Texas Entrepreneurs Network, I considered setting it up as a broker, but found that a substantial portion of our angels and venture capital groups would not follow us because their fund or group membership rules did not allow broker fees in their process. So we decided to go the non-broker path. We provide the companies an investor relations process and so chose a monthly subscription model for Texas Entrepreneurs Network, which today is now called 10 Capital. This worked well as the series stars would engage while those who were running it up a flagpole to see if anybody saluted would not. Since starting in 2009, 10 Capital has helped companies raise over $400 million and continues today to help startups and growth companies to raise funding. Investors from that first angel network received a 40x return on their investment, and the number continues to grow as the remaining companies exit the business.